Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System and my video coverage for the UK Hi-Fi Show Live 2019, which was held at Ascot Racecourse just outside London in England. I'm gonna start the video show coverage with something that's a little bit different. Normally at a Hi-Fi Show, the exhibitors are either manufacturers, distributors, or Hi-Fi dealers. However, in this video, the room has been bought and organized by someone who works in the industry, but he doesn't work for a dealer, manufacturer, or distributor. He is just a serious and passionate audiophile who really loves master tapes, reel-to-reel -reel tapes. And I was fortunate enough to be there in time to video Lynn Stanley, the very famous LA-based jazz singer. But it's a really, really interesting presentation with some beautiful and lovely music. For the music, there'll be links below the video to take you to Lynn Stanley's website and websites where you can buy her music. Sadly, I missed the first few minutes of the presentation, but don't worry, I filmed all the good stuff. Before we get into the video, I want to thank my show coverage sponsors, GIK Acoustics, Chord Electronics, and Telerium Q cables. A huge thanks goes out to them and links to their websites will be down below this video. I hope you enjoy this video and all the videos as part of this Hi-Fi show coverage and I'm sure I'll see you all soon. so you understand how much detail I place on what I'm doing. Um, I, I hire the best engineers you can find. Most of you know that. They're the top ones that do all the major stars. And they've also been working in the business for a long time. I mentioned Alan Sides to you a few minutes ago. He actually owned Ocean Way. Ocean Way, he owned 16 of the top recording studios in Hollywood, including all of the Michael Jackson thriller and all that, all that were done in, in his... Um, studio, the recording part of it. Um, Alan is a, a major um, engineer. I was Annette telling Neville, you could throw junk all over the floor and Alan will make a, a speaker in an hour and a half. I mean, he, he's like, wow, he's over the moon. But he's also got the magic ear. That means the magic ear to me is the man who can actually take and make a mix happen instantaneously. I used him on my, my new direct-to-disc um, album and uh, it's called uh, London with a Twist, and um, I just got, I'm getting such good accolades on it. I made 2,000 units, and I've already sold since I released it in May. I'm only down to 500 left. So if you have one, hold it, because it's a collector piece, I'm pretty sure, going down the line. It's been going fast. The tape part of what I do when I do my tapes now, there's a lot of talking about tapes. This is what, what I'm trying to uh, learn for you. Um, when I go to, the, to these people and talk to them. Okay, Tim DeParvicini wants to, uh, like he likes the half inch, right? Go to 30 IPS half inch. He believes in that. Okay, so I went to, obviously I went to Bernie and I went to Al Schmidt and I went to all those guys and I said, well, what do you guys think? Well, Al also would record down my, my, uh, my analog, would go down to a half inch. 
Bernie said to me, well, you know, Lynn, me and Alan got a different, different idea. And I said, really? He said, we like quarter inch. We've tested. We've tested the half inch, 30 IPS against a quarter inch on the same exact music. Eyes closed, didn't know, back and forth. We like the quarter inch. I said, okay, I'll go quarter inch, 30 IPS. If you guys say, sound will be better. Okay. So we tried it. And it, it turned out nice. It's very good. I agree with them now. But you have to experiment on these things. One of the things I'm going to tell you, I am a recording artist. I'm also a producer. No one in this building, when it comes to music, has made or understands the part about what we do as producers and artists more than me. Believe me, I'm making audiophile music. There's the engineering side of it and all the nuances that they have. They know that. But I know what I'm looking for and how to communicate it to my musicians and my, and my engineers. One of the things that I can tell you, Bernie told me, and I'm just telling you what he says. Um, if he's working his mastering, which he does in NAB, the best tape you're going to be able to get is an NAB platform. S uh, you know, Tim says, oh, IEC, because it's non, it's open-ended and it's blah, blah, blah. And Al, uh, uh, um, Bernie Grunman said, whatever the engineer did, copy it, because that's the tape. Style, you know, if it's IEC that they did their uh, mastering in, get an IEC. If it was NAB, get an NAB. That's all I'm telling you. I, I, you can just argue it to, uh, but you, if you're talking to the actual engineers, this is their, their feeling on it. You need to keep everything in line. It's just like when you do analog, um, when I did the Potions album, it was on two inch 24 track. Everything stayed analog all the way through the entire channel. I don't deviate from that. Now, when I did my direct-to-disc, we also did tape at the same time. It was recorded on tape, but the mix was done instantaneously. Nothing can be done. No fixes to the vocal. No fixes to a musician. The tape is the perfect moment that what we did actually in the studio. So we used the 468 when we were doing um, the recording in the studio on that album, and I'll be putting that out in tape very soon. But that particular album, I'm like watching with my eyes open with all the different things going on at once. And it was also recorded 24 uh, bit 192 um, into a PCM file so that we had it. I have a SACD out now that I've put, I've given you a needle drop of the um, uh, tape, of the, of the album, I'm sorry, of the um, directed disc, a needle drop on number one on the DSD layer and then on number 13 you're going to hear the tape version of this very same song run through the DSD player too. So any arguments, is a needle drop better than a tape? I bring you, because I'm an audiophile, who would have done that for you? I, I did that. That cost me more, but I thought, I want to know the answer. And so I'm bringing that to you. I, I try. If you have any ideas of things, always email me. I listen. I listen. Even on song suggestions, I listen. I did Light My Fire on my Julie London first album. Light My Fire. Well, I, that's so hard for a girl to sing like my car. Can I tell you? Can I, yeah, can I tell you how hard that is? Uh, and so I went to the guys and said, we've got to come up with something unusual. And I had Mike Garson on that song. We were working it, but it was, I, I finally just said to John Cudini, look, this is what I see. My musicians on that album, we made the arrangements of ourselves on both the London albums. And I said, John, this is what I see. I see Clint Eastwood in, a, in dirt you know, with a saloon over there, he's got the thing hanging, he's got the hat on, he's doing this, and the girl's beginning, and I, the, the dancer's like there, and I said, John, what are you gonna do? And he went, boom, boom. And that's the beginning, if you've heard that album, that is Light My Fire. It's what he came up with instantaneously. I'm just very lucky to work with such great musicians. So you ready? Yeah. Okay, now, now we're moving into the Moonlight Sessions Volume Two. I tell you, this album, I, I dedicated it to arrangers. I went to Sammy Nestico, who lives about 35 minutes from me. He is Count Basie's arranger. Yeah. You ready? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we came up with this. First song on the album. It didn't require much in terms of uh, arranging, but I wanted you to hear the clarity of a Bernie Grunman tape now. This is Bernie's work. Another bride, another June, another sunny honeymoon, another season, another reason for making Shoes, a lot of rice. The groom is 
nervous. He answers twice. It's really killing that he's so willing to make. Whoopee. Picture a little love nest down where the roses cling. Picture that same sweet love nest. Think what a year can bring. He's washing dishes and baby clothes. He's so ambitious. Even so, but don't forget, folks, that's what you get, folks, for making laddie daddy daddy. Harmonica player is Henrik Nierkens, folks. Hun, 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 she feels neglected, and he's suspected of making more She sits alone most every night. He doesn't phone her, he doesn't write. He says he's busy, she says, is he?
this song. So Mike Garson and I were working together over in his studio. His studio was part of the fire that went down with all of his David Bowie stuff. Do you remember the fires that were happening in Hollywood and in, in uh, the canyon of Malibu? That was Mike. Mike's uh, studio got taken by that. But before that happened, we were in his studio and um, I told Mike I wanted to merge together classical music and jazz standards together. Very difficult task. However, most of the great jazz musicians that I've ever worked with have studied in classical music training first, first, and then they moved into jazz. Christian Jacob was in Paris, one of the, and was a seven-year-old, a prodigy, and was playing classical music and winning against adults as a young man, the man who just you heard on the previous track. But now I went to Mike and I said, okay, I want to do that old feeling. What can we put with that old feeling? And, um, and he thought about it for a little bit, and we came up with Ravel. So what you, when you take these extraordinary, old, beautiful, classical pieces and you try to integrate them into a song, it has to work. It has to work well so that they, their marriage doesn't sound like it's two different shoes hmm, on, on it. So now, just listen to how they massage the song, the, um, the, the classical piece, into the traditional song of that old feeling. And I'm still emotive. I'm still making you feel like I'm longing for that person. I saw you last night, got that old feeling when you came inside. I got that old feeling The moment that you danced by I felt a thrill And when you caught my eye My heart starts Mike Garson wrote the arrangement Once again Seem to feel that old yearning, and I knew the spark of love was still burning. There'll be no new romance for me. It's foolish to start for the new evening. Is 
time I do something like that, I'm honoring the, one of the singers or the person that did something that was um, uh, something I happen to like. We're just going to keep going. Um, what's, what is this piece? Classical? Anybody? Come on. This is Mozart, huh? This is one of the 40th movement of Mozart. Now I'm moving it into the theme from a story of Summer 42. This is the theme song. Summer 42 movie. It's summer. This is my intellectual album. Summer knows and unashamed. She sheds her clothes. The summer snows. The restless sky and loving. not to send it out, but I am still growing in popularity regardless of reviewers. And I'm so grateful to you all. I thank you a thousand times. If I don't play ball or do something the way they want it, I guess I can get beaten alive. But I'm not putting up with that. I have my own ideas about my art, and I'm presenting it to you, and thank God you're loving it and buying it. I've made over $220,000 this year, so far as of September 30th, with my music. And it's mostly you, but I'm also now getting popular around the world. I'm the Los Angeles number one female jazz vocalist in Los Angeles. This is the coup de grace. Debussy, Clairdelune, with Oh. 
Way above the chimney tops That's where boutique. I fund myself. No one. I have no sugar daddy. I don't date. I, 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 and I take care of my mother. Um, I live in a house with my mother. <laughs> um, and I, but I pay for all my albums. They're about 100000 each to make for you. And, uh, and I, but I do it with love. And, and also, when I get to go to shows, I get to leave my mother alone just for a little while and I get a break. Uh, and to come out. She's still driving and that much scotch every night, and she's 97 in January. She's still driving. My mother's a character. She's totally Irish. Uh, in, I mean, we did the DNA, and she's English and Irish 100%. Yeah. But she's really beautiful, you know, I have to say. Yeah, but she's a character, though. But, it, but that's why I'm able to go so creatively in what I do and I've all musicians that are willing to work with me and are also extremely creative. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It's yeah. such a pleasure. Thank you.